I'd like to ask you if you see paranoia as a factor influencing the psychological background of this election. Dr. Stein, I'd like to hear your insights into this political moment now. As I look at the United States and its history, uh, it seems that um, uh, it's a new nation and it passed through the first stages of individuation very successfully, which has to do with creating an independent standpoint, the Declaration of Independence, freeing itself from its parents, establishing its own grounding, establishing an ego identity, which over the course of time became very successful in the world, fought battles, uh, attacked monsters, destroyed them, and gradually differentiated itself into a, uh, a superpower identity. Uh, which culminated uh, with the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1989-1991, um, the end of the Cold War, which was won by the West, led by the United States. And the United States received a tremendous amount of uh, encouragement and accolade as a result of that, a great heroic country striding the world, dominating uh, the globe at that point. Since then, uh, uh, as George Bush said at that time, President Bush, a new or world order was emerging and nobody knew what that would be. So Nathan has mentioned the new order that's emerging and I think we're in a huge transition, um, a, a state of liminality as I call it on my book in, uh, in my book on midlife, uh, in which we are moving, the United States is moving from a first half of life to a second half of life um, moment uh, in which uh, the earlier identity that was um, very um, uh, dearly bought and fought for is dissolving and going through a process of reformulation. And this is a time of chaos. And the crises that have mobilized this uh, transition are several, 9-11 um, would be one of them, George uh, W. Bush's good intentions to have a compass compassionate conservatism more or less melted away when he was captured by the military industrial complex and sent into the Middle East. I don't think that was his intention when he became president. I think he would have been a very different president had he had his own way. Uh, and that began a, um, uh, plus the, uh, the crash of, uh, of the, um, um, uh, new uh, computer systems and all that uh, technology bubble that uh, developed in the late 90s. And then we had the financial crisis and we had the veterans coming back from these wars, uh, heavily traumatized. And uh, I think uh, this uh, period of uh, negredo, if you will, using alchemical terminology, uh, more or less reached its uh, a low point uh, in the transition from George W. Bush to Barack Obama, who brought great hope uh, that the uh, that that a, a new order would emerge. Uh, he was a very symbolic figure, a self figure, as Nathan said, for many people. And I think the process has begun, but it is in very early stages. Uh, and where it will lead to, I agree with Nathan, will be to a new kind of identity that's based not on the difference between America and, all the, all, and the rest of the world, but its place in the world. In other words, America has to find a place in the world that isn't exceptional. The exceptionalism of America will give way and it will join a world order and a world consciousness in which it has a role to play, but it isn't going to be number one. And so that's a struggle. That, that is an attack on, on American narcissism, specialness, uh, and I think a, a, a good leader, a good political leader, can lead the way in that direction. We can debate, is Donald Trump that man? I don't think so. Uh, uh, is Hillary? Maybe. Uh, there are questions about her, but I think she has a better chance to move in that direction. Because I think what America needs to do is find a, a new grounding for itself in the world and find its value and its center of identity in the self, as Nathan talked about, and that that is a, a perception of a, an unus mundus, not uh, an unus americus, but an unus mundus, that America is part of a larger whole and will take a part in that larger world.
Now, what I think is, is, is surfacing in this election are all the traumas that haven't been dealt with during this period of crisis. The veterans coming back traumatized, the people, as Nathan pointed out, traumatized by the financial crisis, losing their jobs, their homes. And so you've got what Bion called a lot of beta elements in the population. These are undigested, traumatized pieces that uh, uh, are activated, they're compulsive, they're impulsive, they're irrational, and they collect around a figure like Trump, who expresses, who speaks for them, and who says, I will make America great again. Trump wants to go back to an earlier time. Uh, and he's speaking for these traumatized people. He isn't going to treat them, but he's expressing their rage. And I think, uh, so that's what I see going on in America. We're in the midst of a an identity crisis moving from the first half of life to hopefully uh, a more mature attitude. Thank you, Dr. Stein.